Tonight, the shock has not worn off. The grieving far from over at Northside Medical and across the city of Atlanta. Five days ago, one woman shot to death. Four others are still recovering after a man started shooting. Tonight, most operations at that facility have resumed. These are just some of the measures Northside is now taking to help their staff feel as safe as possible. Staff and visitors can expect more uniformed security officers, spiritual leaders, and counselors. And tonight, city leaders are also stepping in, doing more to try to ensure your safety and care for their officers in the aftermath of the shooting and also the eight hour manhunt for the suspect. Atlanta News First political reporter Doug Reardon, live at Atlanta City Hall. Doug, you heard directly from police today about their response. Right, good evening. And today's meeting was all about that response. At the Public Safety Committee hearing, they approved a measure unanimously, six to nothing today. It would allow the mayor's office more coordination and communication with agencies like the Fulton County Sheriff's Office in very complicated responses like the one that we saw last week. And even APD today admitted there's always more that can be done when you're talking about large scale emergency situations like this one. And I was very proud of our officers. I want to say thank you for supporting us and for risking your lives. I was struck by the incredible coordination last week. It was mostly praise from city council members at the Public Safety Committee's first monthly update from Atlanta police after last week's deadly mass shooting. Deputy Chief Prinzina Spann said she was proud of the responding agencies and their officers who aren't being rushed back to work after the traumatic event. We want to make sure that we at least check on them to make sure that they don't need that time off or that time to decompress or if, even if they need to see or have additional counseling sessions. The department has internal and external reviews planned for this week, and Span said there's always room for improvement, especially when APD is working with non-law enforcement agencies. With the new public safety training center coming, it will be a great opportunity for us to be able to train with fire, and that's something that we've never had the opportunity to do before. Councilmember Antonio Lewis praised police response to the shooting, but pushed back when APD was unable to say how many officers were called away from guarding the public safety training site, sometimes called Cop City. While you're working under our taxpayer dollars, we need you for that all cavalry call downtown Atlanta because we were afraid for our lives. Asking for police officers who should be in my district at that time period to come back home, man. I need you. Speaking of that controversial training center, city council members also made a move toward more transparency there at today's meeting as well. Yeah, but they did, Sean. It is no secret that the Atlanta Police Foundation is paying the lion's share of the $90 million price tag attached to that public safety training facility site. They really haven't been uh, very vocal about giving updates or providing any insight into how that project should go. So today, in another unanimous six to nothing vote, the Public Safety Commission and the counselors that sit on it voted to have them come in and provide quarterly in-person updates on that project right now. As I said, they are not required to. APD does most of the updating here at City Hall. As we're live tonight, Doug Reardon, Atlanta News First. A step towards progress. Thank you, Doug. In a new statement to Atlanta News First, the Northside Medical Facility says that two of the shooting victims were Northside employees. And still only one of the four women injured has been released from Grady. The hospital has also created a fund to support the victims. You can find a link to donate at AtlantaNewsFirst.com.